everybody I see on Instagram is a hip artist with an amazing life, except for me, especially Lauren and Eloise, because come on, look at this photo of Eloise. She looks amazing. And she's got this cool fluorescent purple around her. Do you ever have this where just everybody seems like they have an amazing social life? And it's not just a social life. Eloise and Lauren, they're always going to museums and they're going to art openings. And I rarely do any of those things. Yeah, it's and it's funny how I seem to notice those more when I've had a bad day. Like, <laughs> like if I'm like, you know, like the dog ate its own poop and like I spilled things and the painting's not going well. And then I'm like, Oh, I'll just relax and go on social media. And then it's like, everybody is like, Oh, another fun day at the MoMA, like went to this chic gallery opening. Like, and it's, yeah. I mean, I guess it's, that's that key thing. I don't know if you agree with this is that to notice, like if you're having like a good art day, you notice those a lot less often. So like, that tip of like, it took a long time for me to learn not to project myself all the time and not to view it personally, you know? Also, how come everybody's able to match their awesome, cool outfit with some funky piece of <laughs> furniture? Like, I have never been able to take a picture like this. Like, do people just walk around trying to match their fashion? I just, I don't understand. <laughs> Like, how does this happen? How do you become so cool and hip looking? It just, I don't know. I feel like the most boring person on the planet after I look at some of these posts that Eloise and Lauren post of themselves. Yeah, dude, I feel like I either need to be around better wallpaper or I need more patterns. Like, I need one of those two things. Maybe you need both. I would not complain. <laughs> <laughs> wow, we got a lot of people in the chat. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Melody is saying, for me, it's when other people post art regularly, I feel like I'm behind. Yeah, I feel like the last time I went to a museum was like two years ago. And that's just shameful because I'm a professional artist and teacher. Shouldn't I be one of the main people going to museums? And I'm always like, go out and look at art. And here I am being a total hypocrite. So it bums me yeah. out that I don't get to do that as much. Mm -hmm. I, I totally. And that the pressure of like feeling like you need to post art every single day like like let's let it like that negative feeling be right where it's right like yes you should post regularly to maintain a following base like that's just one of those realities of how instagram works but you do not need to do it every day find out a schedule that works for you actually and also, yeah I no, was yeah. doing a lecture tonight about social media at a local art center, and I'm sure the amount of information I gave them was very overwhelming. And one of the people said, I don't understand how I'm supposed to do all of this and work a job and keep up my production as a studio mm -hmm. artist. I said, look, you assign days. Like you say, okay, Monday and Thursday, those are the days that I post the rest of the days. I don't think about it. So I think something really simple like that can be extremely useful. Valco is saying, if you're in New York City, going to art shows can be a full-time job. <laughs> That's true. There's always some amazing show that I'm missing out on. Like I'm still kicking myself for missing that Surratt show of his charcoal drawings that was in New York a little ways back. That made me really, really sad. Can I tell a bad joke? Yes. K Surratt Surratt. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's look at number two. And that's that when you look at Instagram, doesn't it seem like everything you see is finished and perfect? And it just oh, yeah. came out that way with no effort whatsoever. What always makes me really jealous is when people's sketchbooks look pretty. That's more infuriating. My sketchbooks are so ugly. And to be honest, every other page is like a grocery list. Like I don't have beautiful sketchbooks. <laughs> and that really was such a pressure, you know? I feel like I have sketchbook envy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like yeah. I look at everybody's <laughs> sketchbooks and they're so beautiful. And I'm like, what is wrong with me? Like my sketchbook, honestly, like, okay, recently, I've just been doing this. It's just like <laughs> sheets of paper with Sharpie marker 
notes that I do for sure. If I kept a sketchbook, this is what it would look like. And yeah. it just seems like everybody else has this like drop dead gorgeous sketchbook. This is the one time this slide we're looking at that I actually posted a sketchbook, but I was in China and I spent a long time on that drawing. That's not really a sketchbook drawing. That's like a drawing that happened to be in my sketchbook, right? Yeah. You know, I think with sketchbook, you got to like find your working style. Like, cause yeah, like let's, let's build solutions off of these. So with the previous advice you said of like, say you post Monday and Thursday, you sketch throughout all that time. And then that's only two days, two posts. You just take pictures of those good sketches that you like. And then that time, you know, it makes me think of like being in middle school and how there's always like that kid who had like a different colored pen to take different kinds of notes. Like vocab words are in purple. Like those are the kids with the really good sketchbooks. Those kids have beautiful sketchbooks. And I was the kid who was just like one black pen. I was like, I'll just take every note with this and misspell it. It was a mess. And you just gotta embrace what your sketchbook tells you because that's the kind of art you make. Well, here's another thing that's funny, Alex, because here are some Instagram posts from Son Kang, who was a former student of mine. And she actually shot three tutorials with us, which I'm really, really excited to release. This is a scratchboard tutorial and she did two others with pen and ink and marker drawing. And I mean, you look at Song's work and it's just to die for. <laughs> it's so <laughs> intricate and beautiful. And oh my God, her Instagram is like just as amazing. But here's the thing though, Alex, I'm not jealous of Song. You know why? Hmm. Because she's younger than me. And so to <laughs> me, I look at Song's work and I'm like, I'm so proud of you. This is so what like I genuinely am like so happy to support her. And then if yeah. somebody who's much older than me, who's like, I don't know, 60 or something, if something happens to them, I'm like, oh my gosh, you deserve it. I'm so happy. But if somebody my age <laughs> does something really amazing, that's when I get mad. Do you do yeah. that? <laughs> I used to. And it's like it took they like just to change this outlook on like gratitude for other artists, you know, like our tribe is artist, you know, and it's like, yeah, like I've got a bunch of anxiety where it's like, if somebody else, like, what's that joke of like, oh, awards are just there to make you jealous, you know, it's like, no, like, that's not true. Like finding ways to exactly what you said, if someone's younger than you or older than you split that to everyone and find ways that you can like celebrate every artist's victory. Because no matter how nice their Instagram looks, like art is not easy for anyone, you know, like, and just celebrate everyone's success or try to. I don't know, Alex. I think what's worse though. Okay. So the people my age, I get very mad, but you know, the people who are worse, the people who are like two years younger than you, they're like almost <laughs> your age, but they're like just young enough that they were just that much further ahead in their career and they're two years younger. Like, well, crazy. okay, that I think the reason that I've had to cultivate that like mindset is because like from RISD, it's like I feel like I left and it was like then right after I graduated, like boom, 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 like a bunch of like rock stars left. And it was that kind of thing of like, all right, I'm either going to be real bitter for a real long time or just be like, dude, that work is just stellar. And that's so cool to see it, you know? And it's like, yeah. Not easy, but I think it's a healthy mindset. Well, and by the way, if you guys want more on this topic, Jordan and I did a stream about a week ago about how to stop comparing yourself to other artists because we all do this. I'm sure you do this. How, how do you do that, Alex? It's like I have to like in my head, I imagine literally stepping back and being like, like for me, I had to make like a list like. This was like, honestly, like some therapy helped make this list, but it's like step one, just appreciate it. Just be like, that's really cool. I'm glad I saw that. And then step two, like, what can you learn from that? You know, like how, what can that teach me? And then if you start to too heavily compare it to yours, then like walk away. And we've got more tips in that video. If you guys want to check it out, let's see. We got a bunch of people in the chat. Maria is saying, I also feel I'm not so good especially when I find that someone I follow is working on the same topic and what I create is beautiful. It makes sense. The technique is impeccable. Here's my thought about technique, Maria, is that 
technique can only take you so far. And the fact of the matter is, no matter how good I get at oil painting, there's always going to be somebody who can paint better. I mean, I went to graduate school with people who could paint circles around me. I mean, I could never paint flesh and shiny things the way half those people in grad school could do. And what you have to ask yourself is, what can I do? What can I say with my art that nobody else can do, regardless of their technique? What do you mm -hmm. think about that, Alex? Because you're somebody who has oh, such good painting technique, but yeah. I'm sure even somebody like you has felt that before. Yeah, and it's funny, something that, can you say her name again? It was Miria? Uh, Maria. Maria, something that she pointed out was like, when it's the similar subject matter. And I got a lot of that when, like last October, I did a series of Frankenstein to submit to a competition. Didn't get in, by the way. Um, and Frankenstein, it's like, dude, every illustrator in the world that I admire has done Frankenstein. And though that was an exercise of like, oh, wow, I'll never be as good as this. But it's like, no, like, just how would you tell that story? You know, like, take Frankenstein. It's like, do you relate to the monster in this scene? Do you relate to the doctor in this scene? Like, how do you tell it? It's sort of and like that, when an actor yeah. gets to play Macbeth. It's like, totally. what do you do yeah. with that? It's like centuries of amazing actors playing this iconic role. But the mm -hmm. thing is, you have to remember that every actor is different and they're going to have a completely different take. And I think that's the thing to try to remember. This, yeah, a, a student friend of mine told me this like sophomore year at RISD and it always helps cheer me up. It's just that thing of like the fact that you're making it means you're telling something unique, you know? So like, yeah. Casey Kelly is saying, there's also some art that's really good, but not photo friendly. That can be a deterrent for the attention those <laughs> artworks should have. That's so true, Casey, because yeah. there's so many nuances to certain types of artwork that just don't look good on Instagram. Like I think especially black and white work doesn't mm -hmm. have the depth that it should have. Like color work just always looks better on a screen. Don't you think? Yeah. And well, I was, if you heard me rummaging is cause I was hoping that I had a painting of mine beneath me because also like for the watercolors and gouache, some of them are very shiny. Some of them are very transparent. And so the amount, the camera angles I have to do to get no glare on that is insane. So yeah, it sometimes does take a lot of work. Dark Moon is saying, if I was a teacher, I'd be jealous of every great student. I don't know how you manage it, Claire. You know what it is, Dark Moon? When you've had as many students as I've had, like when you've had Alex as a student, you, you just are like, okay, I'm done. Like, <laughs> there's no, I'm going to be a miserable person if I worry about that. And the thing is, when you teach students, you get to know them as people. Whereas I think on Instagram, it's way more anonymous because you could mm -hmm. be following people that you really have never spoken to in person. And to me, Alex is like a real person. He, he's not just some person that makes stuff on Instagram. So I think that definitely helps. And when you get older, guys, you just stop caring about stuff. <laughs> it's like the greatest <laughs> thing ever. I just like love that about getting older. Lauren it's, is yeah. saying being younger, I get that almost same age comparison feeling all the time, especially because I'm not very good at art. Yeah, it's like I, there was some job I was applying for. I can't remember. And the person that got it, okay, not only were they two years younger than me, they went to the grad school that I got rejected from. That's like that double whammy yeah. right there. That was not, not fun. Let's see. Oh, wow. We have a lot of comments. Um, let's see. In Ironhold Century saying Instagram's huge for creatives, show what they can do. This can definitely get competitive. Well, it's interesting you use that word Ironhold Century because I was talking to a couple high school students to prepare for the stream. And they told me that Instagram is not a social media platform for them, it's a competition. Like they're putting their stuff out there, competing for attention and likes. And that makes me really upset. I mean, Alex, you and I did not grow up with Instagram in high school, but what do you think it would have been like for you if you'd grown up with Instagram? It's like the worst Black Mirror episode because yeah, I can very easily imagine what Instagram would have been like for me in high school. And I think that the short answer is it would have made me miserable, but not without benefits. And I know it's really hard to kind of separate those two, 
but it's like the benefits that it would have given me is I think it would have spurred me to be better. Like I shared with you before the stream that like when I like started going to RISD, I went from being like the best artist in my high school to a RISD student. And I think that that dip in cold water of like, nope, there's a lot of other people better than you. That really helped my skill set grow. It wasn't easy, <laughs> but it really helped my skill set grow. And so if you have that kind of mindset of like, this is difficult, I just need to practice with it and don't let it consume you, you know? like. Well, I think an experience that I had in high school, it was actually with music because I played the oboe for many, many years. And for the longest time, I was always the le least good oboe player in town. Like there, there were like six of us. <laughs> we all auditioned for the same orchestra. And just every year was a competition to see who got the best spot. And so the thing about it is I developed almost this like inferiority complex because I was always like almost the bottom of the barrel. And then this one year I practiced really hard and I got into the top spot. And the orchestra I got into was so good. Like, like people were like going to Juilliard from that orchestra. But the thing is, I didn't have a lot of experience playing with an orchestra at that point. And the orchestra was so good that it really stressed me out to be there because I had to like really play at a much, much higher level than I was ready to play at. And in retrospect, yeah, that was hard, but I got so much better, so much faster. And so yeah. it, it can help you even though it's painful in the process what really helps me is seasons like I, i'm sure we're all familiar with inktober where for the month of october you post one ink drawing a day for seasons doing things like that is really good and it feels like a great workout but like i could not maintain that pace for 365 days a year oh no way okay yeah. let's move on to tip number three so not only do people on Instagram have amazing, perfect work that they're popping out all the time, but even their workspaces are beautiful. <laughs> like, how do these people <laughs> do this? I mean, tell me in the chat, have you guys seen people post their workspaces and just go, what? This is like this is so unrealistic. Like, do people actually work in these spaces? And it's funny, Alex, because actually one of the workspaces that I chose <laughs> I believe was Alex's. This one, look, look at this. It's like really nice window, beautiful sunlight coming in. You've got the messy palette, but not too messy drafting table. Mm -hmm. Like this would definitely make me feel crappy about myself. So Alex, tell me the real story of this photo. It's there's two folds. One you know, one you don't know. The real story is that everything outside of the photo is a mess. And also at that point it was my studio and bedroom in one room. And it was carpeted floors, <laughs> which does not go well with paint. And it was awful. So everything, yeah, everything outside of there is not just dirty studio work, but also like a pile of laundry and like just a bunch of crap everywhere. But then also outside that beautiful window with the nice Denver sunlight streaming in, right to the right of that window is a big discount tire store. <laughs> so like... It wasn't like looking out into nature. It was like a busy thoroughfare. Like, which, I mean, yeah, the takeaway from this is like, you can just find the positives out of anything, I guess. But yeah, like, don't feel like everyone else is living the high life. Or, you know what you can do, Alex? You can have a real mm -hmm. studio and just never show anybody how crappy it is. <laughs> this is a photo I took of the desk I work at every single day, and I didn't change a thing. There's like dirty dishes and cups and oh my God, Alex, I'm such a disaster. Like this is exactly what my real life looks like. And to this day, I've never posted a picture. And then, okay, no, it gets better, guys. You ready? So, you know, Alex, how you said there was like dirty laundry and stuff. I don't have dirty laundry, but I do have this like <laughs> random stuff. Like actually your acrylic painting is on the left. Oh, nice. <laughs> so we have your acrylic painting. There's a butterfly net. There's some U-line boxes. There's some, like, it's just so totally embarrassing. And so, guys, this is what real life looks like. Look at my shelves. Like, there's such a disaster. Like, a lot of people have things actually organized, and I just can't be bothered. It's just, like, way too much work for me. Oh, my God. Let's see. Oh, my gosh. We have so many comments. I'm trying to see if I can get to everybody. 
Uh, Rantello is saying, would you recommend using my Instagram account as a quick portable and only finished portfolio or more like a sketchbook and don't mind much about the finished quality? What do you think, uh, Alex? Great question. And because I think the solution is a little bit of both. I think that when I want to ask this by saying my personal Instagram, like has kind of I let it drift away, so I need to rekindle that. But what worked really successfully and that a lot of other professionals advised is you do like sketch, sketch, final, sketch, sketch, final. And you have like a stream. And it doesn't have to be that rhythm, but um, that kind of balance. And I think visually balancing your posts between black and white sketchbook and then like color finishes really helps people when they're looking through it not get bored. I mean, and, I can yeah. tell you, Rontello, that when people only post finished artwork, I actually am not as interested in following them because it's too linear. And I guess what I'm interested in as an artist and educator, I want to see the tools. I want to see what the drawing looked like in the middle, at the beginning. I want to know about their supplies. So Song Kang, who we're looking at here, I really like her Instagram because she does post finished stuff, but she's really good at showing her process. And actually, it was one of the reasons I hired her to do some tutorials with us because she is such a wonderful photographer. I mean, she's really good at documenting the entire process. Let's see. Uh, Bao Bao is saying, do you think that posting your work on another platform other than Instagram, blogs, and others could help? What do you think, Alex? Um, it never hurts. Um asterisks sometimes things hurt um i am gonna call myself and say that i am 29 and if there is a new platform that the kids are using these days TikTok, you want to dance right alex <laughs> a coworker of mine apparently went viral on tiktok the other day so i don't know <laughs> um but yeah like no i mean big thing is like it never hurts but i will say that in the zeitgeist of our culture instagram has kind of dominated for like the visual arts it's, it is the primary form for that. Bao Bao, I think what I actually recommend to people, and this is coming up to the next few tips, is sometimes it's better if you want feedback or response, share it in a group of like five friends. Because if you're in a little group with five friends, it's a much tighter knit community and people really will reply. I mean, if you have a group of five friends and you post something, is it gonna be dead silent? No, because they're like real people that you know. And so I think you could do something like that because honestly, blogs are dead. People are not blogging anymore. Yeah. Facebook is to me like almost over. I think Instagram is really where it is right now. I mean, it could change. It probably will in a few years. Yeah. But right now, that seems to be the place to really be doing that. Let's see. Uh, wow, I'm sorry. I am so like backed up on the comments. Dark Moon is saying, <laughs> I love how your workspace is look so different to each other guys yeah you mean this <laughs> it's like it could not be more hideous in a way and phoebe yeah. is saying yes since they usually appear to be quote organized it usually motivates me to do the same thing luna saying my desk can't stay organized and clean for more than five hours actually one nice. good thing about having a horrible desk like this when my desk gets this bad it's actually a sign that i'm very productive and i'm getting stuff done is, is that true for you, Alex? Yeah. Like, it's like whenever I start a new project, I always like to, my ritual is to like clean everything, organize the brushes. And then within five minutes, it's a mess again. Cause it's like, yeah, that's how you know I'm working and not just taking Instagram pics of my studio. Like, I, yeah, I had an old woodshop teacher in high school who said like, if you clean it too, well, it looks like you didn't do anything. And I really like that. Well, you know what else, Alex, when I'm procrastinating, I clean my desk. <laughs> so if my desk is clean, it means that I'm procrastinating, which is a bad thing. So actually, while I hate my desk and think it's horrible, it means that I'm so revved up that I can't be bothered to stop and clean something, which is a good thing, I think. Literally, Let's that's see. The we have that. some questions. Let me see. I think I like missed a couple of these. Ironhold Century is saying, I think the whole like account and follower account on Instagram can definitely impact how we compare oh, ourselves to others in a negative way. Yeah, and especially because it's like so concrete. It's a number, yeah. right? It, it's like a chemistry quiz. It's like, you got 82 likes. Oh, I got 54. Like, did you do that thing in high school, Alex, where you get your quizzes back and you turn to your friends, hey, what'd you get? Yeah, 
And okay, I'm so glad they brought up that point because Instagram came so close to fixing it. Do you remember a couple months ago when they were like, we're going to hide the amount, like the follower count? Yes. Yeah. No, what they should have done is make it optional for you to not see your own. Mm -hmm. Like, that would be so much more helpful. Like, if you could post a painting and then 24 hours go by and it's like, I don't know if one people or a thousand people liked this. That would be Instagram. If anyone is watching this, <laughs> make that a feature. Because, yeah, that to me, that's where the devil of comparison comes in. Let's like, see. Like, if I see a beautiful... Ironhold Century is saying it's almost like a composition for a painting. Everything has been placed just right to seem more impressive and visually appealing. You know something? I have this one friend and I can't post the picture because it's too obvious who it is. But they once posted their new studio because they had moved into this new space and everything. And I mean, it looked like, I, I don't know, like a Pinterest board photo. And they had like labeled every single item on the desk and on the wall. Like, like even their bulletin board stuff looked pretty. Like my bulletin board is full of ripped pieces of paper in my crummy handwriting with Sharpie markers on it. And she had like nice calligraphic lettering. And it just made me want to puke because I was like, come on, nobody <laughs> lives like this if you're actually making artwork. <laughs> and Dark Moon saying, I love how your workspaces look so different. And let's see, Ironhold Century says, my desk is my apartment floor. <laughs> that's great. I love that. Okay, let's go to tip number four. And that's that everyone else is winning awards, getting jobs, but I got rejected three times this week. Mm -hmm. How do you feel, Alex, when somebody your age or two years younger wins an award yeah. or gets a gig? Like, can you think of a pose that just got to you for one reason or another? Yeah, many actually like, and it's, it's always like harder when it's in a similar field. Like, it's like, I remember when like a friend of mine that I graduated with and it was like, they got like hit this mark where it was like, boom, like published like five children's books before I'm 30. That's amazing. And it was like, oh my God, that is amazing. And it's like, in my brain, it was like, half of me was like, be happy for them. The other half was like, no, be insanely jealous of them. <laughs> and it's like, you just gotta like, you just gotta feed the other one, you know? Um, and yeah, like just kind of, when I think of like, what helps with that honestly is to look up artists that you admire and like their career trajectory, cause it's never seamless, you know? Well, I think that all you hear about are the people that had a meteoric rise and oh my God, they did all these things. Actually my favorite, Alex, the Forbes list, 30 under 30. I love that <laughs> list every single year. And you know something this year, two of my former students were on it. Yeah, dude. I mean, I'm <laughs> old enough that I can say, I'm so proud of you. But if I was 29, I don't know that I'd feel that way. I think my next door neighbor in my freshman dorms was on that list. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like, no, it's, it's, yeah, I mean, it's like, I sound like a broken record, but it's like that kind of thing. For me, I found it's like, it's so much easier in the long run to celebrate those successes rather than wonder when they're going to happen to you, you know? And that thing of like, yeah, if it's not you, it's not you. And you have to kind of, kind of speak something we'll talk about later, but like you have to know what your target audience is, you know? I don't know, Alex. My feeling is that awards are just there to make everyone else feel crummy. Because that's exactly <laughs> what happens to me. You're a much better hearted person because I am like raging with jealousy when I see other people win an award. And it's so annoying because you like can't not comment. Like you have to type, congratulations, that's so cool. And when it's a former student, I really mean it. But when it's somebody my age, it makes me mad. <laughs> yeah, and that's the, like, did, did I tell you the story of, like, in the first, like, big award I won, and it was, like, in Italy, and it was amazing, and, like, my work is on a big banner, and the official post, like, photo taken, like, the president of the organization, their face was covering my painting. <laughs> <gasps> It felt like, it, like if any of y'all seen Monsters, Inc. when Mike Wazowski is like, I'm on the cover of a magazine. <laughs> like, and it's, I don't know. It was just that moment of like, you just, that kind of demystified it for me. You know, it was just like, you just got to laugh, you know? 
you know something though i do have a nice fairy tale ending though <laughs> so <laughs> there is a grant in massachusetts for massachusetts artist residents it's called the massachusetts cultural council artist fellowship and it's a big award it's like twelve thousand dollars most artist grants are fairly small they're more like two thousand maybe three thousand and then there's like huge ones like the guggenheim which you know two people win <laughs> for ever and ever. And so I applied to the Massachusetts Cultural Council every year for 20 years, and I won it in 2018. Come on. I mean, can, yeah. can you imagine that? It's like I spent 20 years applying. But then again, there's always the people who are like one year at an art school, and then they win it right away, right? <laughs> and you just got to like you just got to look at that and just be like, that's, that's wild, you know, like, and that's, that's that thing that, yeah, like, again, I'll blatantly say it, like, lots of years of therapy helped me to look at it this way. But just that thing of like, how crazy talented is that person, you know, and how much hard work do they put in? And that does not equal you are not putting in that hard work, you know, right? Like, when you won that award. How many people were jealous of you at that point? You know, that's true, but I was much older than 21 when I won that award. And you know something? You guys tell me in the chat if you think this is true. Sometimes being an artist is boring. Sometimes it's just a slog and you have days where it just nothing's happening. So here's an example. This is the only reason I feel better about it is that one of my former professors who is now like an internationally renowned artist, like the expert in his field, he told me that when he was my age, he said, quote, some years it was just me making my work and nothing happened. <laughs> and I felt yeah. a lot better about it because, OK, first of all, he's really well known. He shows at a Chelsea Art Gallery and he also won a Guggenheim. So it's like, dude, yeah, OK, if he had to go through that, maybe it's OK for me to have to do that as well. Bao Bao is saying, my work has always been more violent and very sad. That is one of the reasons why I don't post on social media. I feel like nowadays people tend to judge the artist more than his actual creation. Do you think that's true, Alex? That's a very good point. Of, and it brings up um, whether or not you want your Instagram account to be like your personal one plus your art or if you want it to be just your art. Um, I think that it is entirely up to you. I think it, as you're describing your art, it depends on the type of art you make, whether or not you share images of your life around it. Um, I've entertained the idea of having an exclusively just art Instagram account. None of my face, not my dog, not a hike I went on, just the art. Um, and that can be a really good solution. Let's see, FBI is saying, whenever I get rejected, speaking of rejection, We've got a video to keep you covered. <laughs> you can hear about all my rejections. There's so many of them. They are saying it disappoints me, but mostly inspires me to push myself even harder. I don't know if that's healthy or not, but yeah, it mostly made me flip tables in my head. Whatever works, FBI, yeah. right? There's no correct way that things are supposed to be. If it works for you, fabulous. Mitchell Scott is saying, I used to enjoy posting on wet canvas. Although it has a faction of the users on Instagram, you get feedback, positive and constructive from the community. People actually care, which is heartening. Oh, I've never been on Wet Canvas before, but it's nice to hear that there is a community out there online, which is very encouraging. And Esme yeah. is saying, I decided to live life first, now 40 years. It's time to start. This is a great channel. Guys, that's the coolest thing about art is you don't have to be a specific age to do it. Like, you know how athletes their career is over when they're like 38. <laughs> That's so depressing to me. We don't have to worry about that. Okay, our last tip is that puzzling, obnoxious, how does everybody get so many likes? How do they get all the follows? And how do they get all those comments? Because like, look at Song. She's again, she's my poster child <laughs> for Instagram, but she has over 15,000 followers. And she told me that people ask her all the time, like, how do you get followers? What's the secret? And she says to me, she's like, look, I busted my butt for this. this. This did not just happen because I make good work. Like she actively had to take the initiative to do it. It's time consuming. Like you, you really have to spend a lot of your waking day investing in Instagram. 
I mean, Alex, you told me that you took a long Instagram break. Like, what was that like? Uh, well, I'm still on it, <laughs> the break, and it feels great. Um, but yeah, like, because for, and this might be helpful to the viewers. I realized that I didn't know where I wanted my art to go. And that was, I recognized for me, a bad time to be posting it because I started to be more focused about posting it than thinking about making it. And now I feel like I'm really learning something about my art for the first time in a couple of years and I'm really developing. So don't feel like your art and your Instagram following have to grow at the same time. They shouldn't because you know something, the stuff that gets a big response on Instagram, honestly, a lot of it's not very good artwork. Like Jordan and I did the stream a few days ago about how a lot of people are very impressed by photorealism. But that actually a lot of photorealistic drawings are really boring and really not mm -hmm. creative or exciting. And yet, if you post a photorealistic drawing on Instagram, chances are it's going to get a big response. But I'll tell you, if I did the run of the mill popular photorealistic drawing that you see on Instagram, and I wanted to put that in a professional show, oh, that would not work. <laughs> that would not get me really high up on the food chain in academia. <laughs> so. and, well, and, and likewise too, on like another end of the spectrum, like if it, like say if your personal goal is to illustrate like the beautiful illustrations for like the Magic the Gathering cards or for the next D&D Monsters manual, you stay true to that goal and maybe don't pay too much attention to like the fine art or the contemporary art side of Instagram, you know? Like the art world's broad enough that you can just pick your pick your angle. You make your own place. You don't have to fit into what everybody else wants. Let's see, Jason yeah. Steven is saying they have an art Instagram, got really unhealthy. I get racked up in the numbers. I would make art only for the likes and follows. Yeah, you don't want Instagram to dictate your creative choices. It should be a separate thing. Instagram should be the thing that you do after the fact. You shouldn't be thinking, mm, what am I gonna post? And is that gonna be popular? Like that is not a good way to create your artwork. And Dark Moon is saying, which is why Instagram can be very damaging for young or beginner artists. They tend to make a lot of incoherent work with a variety of mediums and the viewer craves coherency. That's so true. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think if you're a young artist, you should try everything and you should make a ton of crappy drawings. You should not be yeah. trying to succeed and hit it out of the park every single day. Because I did not do that when I was an art student. I made so much bad work. This is not uncommon. Yeah, like don't like um, it's it doesn't have to be perfect. Don't let good get in the way of great. Like, yeah, like when I'm thinking that earlier question of if I had Instagram when I was in high school, then I'll tell you what, like me and my friends probably wouldn't have finished that terrible vampire comic that we were making, you know, but I needed to finish that. You know what I'm saying? Like, but if I had all of this pressure and all of this telling me that that wasn't good, I might have never made it. Anyway, and... we hope you'll explore more of our free resources on artprof.org, our main site, and that you will join the Artprof family by subscribing to our channel. And thank you so much to our top Patreon supporters. You guys keep us up and running. And thank you to everybody who joined into the live stream. We got some great comments. We hope you guys will join us next time. Bye.